the last UGM. And it'll include some things that were in the last UGM slide. So there's some overlap. So this is kind of the last three releases. Um, and I'm going to talk more about this during the What's New sessions, but I want to start with the two things I mentioned. The first is the hydrogen mess. Um, so 24 years ago, when I wrote the original code for the RDCAT Atom, um, I made a mistake with the way implicit hydrogens were handled. Um, if you've ever dealt with the RDCAT Atom API and you've seen that there's a function get num implicit hydrogens and get num explicit hydrogens, and we're confused by what the difference between those are, particularly because the explicit hydrogens, a normal human being would think that an explicit hydrogen is a hydrogen that's actually in the molecule graph, so a hydrogen that's actually there, and an implicit hydrogen is a hydrogen that's not in the molecule graph. That's what a human being would think. That wasn't me 24 years ago. Um, God, God only knows why. Is this your first UGM, Alberto? <laughs> Um, so this was a, this was a, this was a dumb mistake I made. Um, there's reasons for it, but they were dumb. Um, and I'd like to fix this, but let me just show you. So here I've constructed a molecule. Um, I'm just showing you the molecule and I, I've made this one kind of silly, but I'm constructing it from smiles and I have, um, carbon zero was constructed with just a carbon that's not in square brackets. The last carbon, carbon six was a carbon that is in square brackets. And I specify the number of H's. Um, and then carbon two has three H's around it. Um, and then if I do debug, how many of you do not know about the debug function? Okay, so the debug function is a really good way to find out what the RDKit thinks about the molecule. Um, so if you call debug in Python, in C++, it's debug mole, and you give it the stream to send it to. For those of you using Windows um, in Jupyter, I apologize, this doesn't work. Um, it, the debug information goes somewhere, and I can't figure out where it is. Um, if anybody has the time to look into that, I, I, it would be an enormous service to the community. I have tried a number of times that I, I just end up pulling out why well, I can't pull out my hair, um, banging my head on the table. But you can see, so it shows for each atom, it shows you the charge, the degree, that's the number of neighbors it has. This is the explicit valence, this is the implicit valence, and then the hybridization. And then what you can see is atom zero has an implicit valence of three and an explicit valence of one. And then atom six, which is exactly the same as atom zero, has an explicit valence of four and an implicit valence of zero. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it is what it is. Um, and then if we go and actually have the atoms print out the non-implicit H's and non-explicit H's, and then this more interesting value, which is the total number of H's, this is what you should always use, get total number of H's, because it actually gives you a sensible value. Um, you can see that atom zero has three implicit hydrogens, no explicit hydrogen. Atom two has neither implicit nor explicit hydrogens, but it still has three hydrogens. <laughs> I shouldn't do this, right? I do this about other people's, but I know why this happens. Um, it's dumb. Uh, and then atom six has no implicit hydrogens and three explicit hydrogens. Um, all, but so basically what I'm, all of them should return something, well, Non-implicit, non-explicit shouldn't be there, basically. You should just use get total number of images. Um, this gets more complicated. If you remove hydrogens, it gets even more stupid. I'm confusing whatever word you want to use. Uh, and then when you get down to the atoms, there's get explicit valence and get implicit valence, and that has the same problem um, with what comes back from what. So solutions for you to avoid the confusion at the moment, as long as it's still there, is you should always just use get total number of H's, right? That just gives you the total number of H's around an atom. Um, and you can give it the include neighbors tie, fly, um, argument. If you set that to true, it looks to see if any of its neighbors are hydrogens. And if you turn that off, it just looks to see whether or not they're implicit hydrogens on them. What human beings think of as implicit, not already get implicit. Um, and that, that will avoid the problem. If you want to know the total valence on the atom, just use atom get total valence, and then that, that takes care of the problem. So, are there how many of you have been confused by this in the past? Yeah. How many of you think I should fix it? Are you aware it's going to break your code when I do that? <laughs> so, so we're going to, I would like to fix this. Um, 
So concretely, what I would like to change is I would like to get rid of this really confusing distinction between implicit and explicit. Um, if it's not in the graph, it should be implicit, right? So if it's not physically present in a molecule, it should be implicit. Um, the pro concrete proposal for how to do that is to get rid of the functions, get num implicit H's and get num explicit H's. Um, you just use get total number of H's. And if you want the ones that are in the graph, you do include neighbors. If you want the ones that are not in the graph, you don't include neighbors. And then to change the semantics of get implicit valence and get explicit valence to return something sensible. The first one is pretty easy because this, this is going to break your code if you're using one of these functions, and then you know you need to change it, right? Because if you have a call to get non-implicit hydrogens or get non-explicit hydrogens, you, it just won't work. The last two are a little bit tricky because if you have calls to these, they're going to start returning different values. Um, so this, I'm a little bit less certain about what to do for these two. This one, it's clear what to do. So my suggestion, I like to go ahead and do this change once we decide exactly what to do with these last two, with the 202503 release, so the release next spring. Um, if we do decide to do that as part of the next release, the 09 release, we're going to start adding warnings to the functions that are going to be changed. So they tell you, if you call them, they tell you that you shouldn't be using them. Um, yeah, that's the idea. We still need to talk about this among the maintainers team to make sure we're everybody's happy with it. Paolo hasn't heard this yet. Um, <laughs> I'm scared too. Um, so we have to figure out exactly the right way to do it, but that, that's the basic idea. And this is a major, this is a big one. It's one I've been talking about doing for a long time because this is really a source of confusion. Um, it's it, it comes up regularly. What does getting implicit hydrogens mean? And it's difficult to explain. It's difficult to understand and reason about. You really just need to understand, in order to have it make any sense at all, you need to understand the dumb decision that I made back 24 years ago. Are there any questions about that? If you have suggestions about how to do it, do do this, um, grab me afterwards or send me an email. We don't have time to talk about it right now, but are there questions about the suggested changes? Yeah. Um, we can talk, some of that we can change. So. The question for the people online is if this is going to change the behavior of remove hydrogens. Um, there are some flags to remove hydrogens that will change the behavior of, but it's not going to change. I think one of the things that you don't like based upon some past conversations is for people, if you call remove hydrogens, the default behavior of remove hydrogens is not to remove all of the hydrogens from the molecule. Um, so specifically, if you have a hydrogen, which is determining the, determining the stereochemistry of a double bond, it will not remove that hydrogen because by removing it, you remove stereochemistry. And there's a couple of, of other instances where it won't remove a hydrogen. There is a call that allows you to remove all hydrogens if you really want to get rid of everything. Um, and we can look at that, but I, I think the main change will be around the implicit explicit. Dan, you had a question. Yeah, so the, the, they're also, I think they're not exposed to Python, but the there are functions that allow you to change the number of implicit and explicit hydrogens. Those will also go away. Well, we'll need to figure out a solution for that. Other questions on this? Okay, so that's the hydrogen mess. Um, the next set of changes around stereochemistry. So I wanted to just quickly give an intro to how stereochemistry works in the RD kit, um, or doesn't work as the case may be. It's all, I'm going to start with works. Um, so here's a molecule that I made up. It has a double bond, it has stereochemistry, and has a chiral center. If I do debug on that molecule, you can see for the atom that has so atom five, which is the chiral center, it tells you what the chirality is. So it's counterclockwise, and it tells you what the neighbors are. That's that's um, neighbors four, six, and seven. I mean, what this, I'll talk about what the representation means, but this is the representation of the chirality. So you understand what it's perceived. Similarly, with the double bond, and it tells you that the double bond, the stereo is E, um, and that the atoms, which are E to each other, are atoms one and five. So one and five are E. Um, I'm not going to, there's a detail about that, but I, I'll skip it because um, we don't have time. So the, the actual representation, we saw it when you do debug for, for atom five, there's CCW and four, six, seven. 
So what it's telling you is if you look from atom four to atom five, so neighbor, the first neighbor, which is atom four to atom five, we would go counterclockwise when going from atom six to atom seven. So if you look at this and you look at the rotation direction from six to seven, that's counterclockwise when you're looking down the bond from four to five. That's the internal representation, right? That's when you see this CW, CCW, it's what it means. So you need to have C, the CW, CCW, and you need to have these neighbors in order to make sense of it. Is that clear to everyone? Um, okay. Um, and for those of you who don't know how to do it, the easiest way to do this is you use the right hand rule. So if I sit at the center atom, which is atom five, and I point my thumb to atom four, I go counterclockwise when I go from atom six to atom seven, right? That's CCW. Okay. Um, the double bond is easy. Um, so E is trans. Um, and atom five are trans across the double bond. If you're using the new stereo perception, which is what I'm about to start talking about, instead of saying E, it says trans. Um, so then you don't need to remember that E is trans and um, Z is cis. E, technically E is not actually trans and Z is not actually cis. And that's why this is also terrible. That's why we switched to cis and trans. Again, mistake made 20 years ago. Um, Okay, so there is a new stereo perception code that's available in the RD kit. Um, you can access it now already, and it's been there for a few releases by just calling set use legacy stereo perception false. And if you then construct the molecule and do the, the output of the stereo of the debug, the atomic stereo hasn't changed, but now you get trans instead of E. Okay, there's a bunch of other stuff that changes, which I'm going to talk about now. Before doing that, there was another change that happened in 2023-09. I'm not going to get into huge detail on that, but it's in the notebook. So we changed how we extracted information. When you draw a molecule in 2D and you have a wedge bond, how you extract the actual rotation direction from this drawing. And there used to be a lot of special purpose code and some really stupid geometry, trigonometry. Um, to do this, and it's gotten a lot simpler in the most recent release. Again, not getting into details here, but it's in the notebook if you care. And if you want to talk about it later, I'm happy to. I love this stuff. Um, so the new stereo perception code, this is this thing that happens when you do set use stereo, legacy stereo to false. The reason we did it is um, there are some problems with the old stereo code. So this is two examples of a molecule. Uh, or two different molecules. One has stereo specified on atoms one and five. Atom three is a potential stereo center um, because one of these is R and the other one is S. Um, here's the same molecule drawn completely flat. All three of these are potential stereo centers, right? That's a potential stereo, or that's potential stereo, and this is potential stereo because both of those are potential stereo. The default behavior of the RD kit at the moment will recognize that this is a potential stereo center but it will not recognize that these two are potential stereo centers. Um, so that is a bug. If you'd use the turn off the legacy stereo, it gets that right. And that's what the rest of this notebook shows or the rest of this section. Of the notebook. Um, there's some other instances. So this is from Dan. Um, Dan filed a bug report about this years ago and it took a while to fix it. Um, the question here is whether or not that's a potential stereo center and that's a potential stereo bond. I mean, the answer is yes and yes. And the old version of the article does not realize this, um, but the new version does get this right. Um, so that's when you do use legacy stereo off, it will recognize that these are that's a potential chiral center and that's a potential chiral stereo bond. Um, in order, you, you really need to build a model of this in order to convince yourself that this is true, but it, it is, in fact, that is a chiral center and that is a stereo bond. Okay, why all of this? I would like to change the behavior so that we do the right thing. So I want to change that the use legacy stereo is turned off by default. Why do you care? The reason you might care is, well, first of all, you'll get more correct results, which hopefully you like. Um, but there's going to be some changes. So right now, when you process a molecule, um, you just read a molecule in. Chiral atoms have this SIP code property set on it. How many of you know about this? Okay, so that's going to go away um, by default. 
Also double bonds are gonna be cis or trans instead of being R and S. So if you're used to checking for R and S, it's not gonna be that anymore, it'll be cis or trans. Sorry, E and C. Oh, bad. <laughs> I'll, I'll fix that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's very important. I And I, I mentioned pseudo SIP here. Those values that you used to get the RNS and SIP code and the E and Z that were assigned to, them, to the bonds are approximate. They are not real SIP values. There are many cases where they give you the wrong answer, right? It will be really, it's going to give, it's correct as whether or not they're stereo, but the assignment is wrong. Um, and the reason it is, there's a paper here that um, explains how complicated the whole thing is. And I also include a link to the algorithm that's being used, that's currently being used um, so you understand where it all comes from if you care. So anyway, we want to fix all of that. Um, when we fix it, the, these weird stereo situations will be handled properly. The zip codes will not be assigned automatically. There's an extra call you have to make to get them. But when you do it, the zip code that you get will actually be correct, um, which I think is nice. So yeah, that's it. There's a bunch more information to do in the notebook, but that's the those are the important bits. Are there questions or comments about that? Okay. I so I think there's a call that allows you to turn the EZ into cis trans. Um, I think there's a function I added to the API, but I'm not sure that it'll change change it for you. Again, if you want the old behavior, you can always call set use legacy stereo true, um, or there's an environment variable that it, you can also use. Um, but I would encourage you to modify your code. It's I'm going to have a blog post about what you have to do to modify it. It's pretty easy to check all of that. Any other questions or comments about this? So the plan here is that this will again happen for the um, 03. Uh, sorry, 2025-03 release. So we'll make it the default there. Um, that gives us another release to make sure everything's okay in the back. Um, I still, I would like to do a little bit more performance tuning on the new stereo code, but um, I think we're in basically in good shape there. So there will be advanced warning. There'll be some blog posts about what you need to look out for and what to do. So the, the take home message here is that you want to really, you definitely want to read the release notes in general for the RD kit before you install it. I strongly suggest that, particularly before you install major releases, because there's this big section at the top of the release notes about backwards incompatible changes that you probably want to read. Um, and for the 2023-2025-03 release, you definitely want to read those because there's a couple of things that may bite you there. Yeah, so this is this was a I was attempting to um, the reason I showed this particular one is you get the correct labels. So this is the correct SIP label for this one in the middle is a it's a lowercase s, not an uppercase s. Um, you need to read the two hundred and eight. Roger, how many pages are in that that series of volumes? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even the paper, yeah, so the paper I cite in here where they talk about the difficulties in SIP is is already really long. And if you actually go back to the original books, they're books. Okay, so that's it for my stuff.